We're up here near Cameron Pass in north central Colorado um, as part of the NASA SnowX project where we're measuring snow water equivalent on the ground. And here we're actually within the Cameron Peak wildfire, uh, the largest fire in Colorado history that burned last summer, the summer of uh, 2020. And really the questions that we're asking today are how does the, the wildfire impact snow accumulation and snow ablation uh, here in this, in this burn area? We're out here measuring uh, the snow water equivalent um, using a variety of different tools. Some of the most basic tools are using a probe and GPS to measure the snow depth manually. Uh, we'll use ground penetrating radar to measure the travel time for the radar wave to move through the snowpack and come back up to the surface. And we can convert that to a snow depth and eventually to a snow water equivalent or SWE for short. Um, and then we're also using uh, drones today to collect aerial imagery for structure for motion derived DEMs. So by having a lot of overlapping images uh, in, in a sequential order, we can produce a digital elevation model that we've been flying since January. And basically we can track the snow accumulation through the winter and now the snow melt or snow ablation here in the springtime and, and early summer period. And the exciting thing that we're doing today is we're using terrestrial LIDAR as well. Um, this is producing another surface elevation product that we can difference from previous TLS scans or previous snow off, um, either airborne LIDAR or ground-based TLS scans to calculate a distributed snow depth. And what the scans do is it uses laser pulses to uh, measure the distance to any individual point on a tree or on the snow surface. And we can, from that, create a 3D model of the area. And so we're using a bunch of scans that we can then combine into one big data set that can then be compared to drone flights and other measurements. The lack of, of the canopy in the burn area reduces the amount of intercept that the canopy captures of the snow and subsequent sublimation that occurs. In the springtime, as we start to see snow melt, the decrease in surface albedo due to the accumulation of soot and other um, dark debris on the, on the snow surface, results in uh, increased absorption of sh shortwave radiation, which subsequently increases the melt rate. And that's something that we're certainly seeing here at this site. Um, you can see in the background here, we're largely snow free and just out of view uh, in the unburned uh, portion of our study area, we still have anywhere from you know, uh, 30 to 90 centimeters of snow. Another tool that we're using to measure and understand the snowpack and how it evolves through the, the winter uh, uh, accumulation season, the spring melt season, are repeat snow pits. So each week we go out, we dig a snow pit to the ground surface. Sometimes that's, you know, early season might have been 50 centimeters. At the peak of the accumulation in the mid-March time period, we saw upwards of two meters of snow on the ground here. And in that snow pit, we would measure snow density, we would measure grain size and stratigraphy. Um, and now in the spring, we're measuring other variables such as the liquid water content, because that greatly affects um, the radar velocity in the snowpack. At present, there's no uh, single method uh, on a satellite platform can, that can go out and measure snow water equivalent on global scales um, in the range of snow conditions that we find on the, on the planet. The NASA SnowX project is a multi-year uh, program funded by the Terrestrial Hydrology Program at NASA that seeks to uh, develop methods and test methods for measuring snow water equivalent from remote platforms. Uh, right now we're using a combination of airborne and satellite platforms and, and the end goal is to be able to have a, a combination of methods that could be deployed from a satellite platform to measure snow water equivalent on global scales. Snow water equivalent is, is the most important hydrologic variable related to snow and snow melt you know, is valued at trillions of dollars. This year we've been part of uh, a time series campaign in which uh, a NASA UAV SAR aircraft has been flying over our field site and five other field sites throughout the western U.S. Uh, and each week it's using an L-band INSAR instrument, so it's collecting this synthetic aperture radar image of the scene. And by doing that week after week, you can look at the change in the radar phase from one flight to the next. And that change in radar phase is associated with changes in snow water equivalent on the ground. And so our ground observations have been uh, have really focused on capturing this, this change in snow conditions from week to week how much snow accumulated, 
and, and what's the spatial variability, what's the density of that snow, because those are the parameters that will really help us understand uh, these observations from uh, the airborne platform. And this is particularly exciting uh, because in 2023, the NASA ISRO, Indian Space Agency uh, NISAR instrument will be launching. And this, is, this satellite will be carrying an L-band instrument. Um, and so we'll have these global observations in the coming years and really uh, the outcome of this project will allow us to uh, fully realize the potential of, of these satellite-based measurements.